Hi there! In this video, I will show you how to work with the ESP32 IDF using Visual Studio Code. Let's get started! My name is Yuria, and this is my first video of my ESP32 series. I will show how to set up your environment in a simple way, and also three of my favorite Visual Studio Code extensions. The first thing that we are going to do is download and install the ESP32 IDF framework from the manufacturer's website. Just type ESP32 IDF on Google and the first link should be the right one. Scroll down and download the environment for Windows by selecting Windows and download the ESP IDF tools. Open the file and while you go through the installation, select in here the latest release version. Also in this field we can change where the framework is going to be installed. I prefer to keep it simple. Let's change this to ESP for example. And in this final step, I suggest you to uncheck this last option. Sometimes it fails during the installation, so just remove that to avoid problems. And finally click install. Once the installation is done, a link to a customized terminal should appear on your desktop. This custom terminal loads everything that you need to build and run your project. Let's build and run an example. Type cd examples slash get started slash blink. And now let's build it by typing idf.py build and the compilation will start. This process is going to take a while since it's compiling the whole framework. The next time you type this command, it will be way faster because it will only build what has changed. After it finishes, we can see that it generates a huge command line here. This command is used to load your application into your microcontroller. The next step is downloading and installing Visual Studio Code. Let's go ahead and download the installer for Windows. After the download, go through the normal installation and open Visual Studio Code. Let's now open the example project that we have compiled before. Click in File, Open Folder and select the Blink folder from the ESP IDF examples. Here on the left side, it will open a browser where you can see all files and folders inside of the Blink project. The most important things here are the main folder and the Blink.c file. If you are not familiar with IDF, this is your main function, or in this case, app underscore main. Depending on the ESP32 board, your LED might be in a different pin, and you need to change here. In my case, I'm using the ESP32 dev kit V1, and the LED is on pin 2. Ok, let's open the terminal and run the same command as before to build our project. Let's type idf.py and hit enter. Since we don't have this terminal configured for the IDF compiler, it doesn't work. What you are going to do is copy the parameters from the IDF terminal and use them inside of Visual Studio Code. To do this, we are going to create a workspace, which allows us to define custom arguments and parameters. Click on File and Save Workspace As. Just make sure you are in the Blink folder and save a new workspace with the name Blink for example. After you have saved, it will create the Blink Code workspace file, where you can change your custom settings. In our case, you want to add the same IDF terminal parameters to our project. The first parameter is terminal.integrated.shell.windows, which defines the terminal application file to be called, in this case, cmd.txe. The second parameter is terminal.integrated.shell.windows, shellargs.windows, which defines what argument you are going to pass to the terminal application. The first argument that you need is slash k, and the second one is the path to your IDF export.bat file. This file is responsible for loading and setting all the environment variables on the terminal, in order to run and compile IDF. In our case, c colon esp slash esp idf slash export.bat. Ok, that should be enough for now. Let's open the terminal again. Notice that a little window pops up asking for permission. Click Allow 
and close the terminal by clicking on the little trash can icon over here. Again, open a new terminal and voila, we have the IDF terminal configured inside the Visual Studio Code. Let's go ahead and build the Blink example again by typing idf.py build. If you have an ESP32 device connected, you can program it and run the Blink application by typing idf.py flash dash p and followed by your COM port. In my case, my device is connected to my COM port 1 and hit enter. This command will compile and flash the firmware into your ESP32 device. The next thing that we can do is monitor the device while it's running. Just type idf.py monitor dash p and your COM port. This will bring up the terminal and display all the output from your application, allowing us to debug, monitor and run the application inside of Visual Studio Code. Now that we have the IDF configured and running inside of Visual Studio Code, I will show you three of my favorite extensions to customize your Visual Studio Code to help us to debug and navigate through the code. The first extension that I recommend is C++ C++ by Microsoft. This extension makes Visual Studio understand your C or C++ code and link all the files and variables in your project. So you can easily navigate and find definitions just by clicking on them. After it finishes the installation, some red squiggles will come up in your code saying that includes or definitions for some files are not found. This happens because the extension is not aware of the IDF libraries. To fix this, hover the mouse over the file and wait until the light bulb comes up. Click and select Edit Include Path Settings. This will open a file called ccplusproperties.json. Here you can add a new line inside the Include Path variable with the IDF framework path. Also, add a double star at the end. It helps IntelliSense to find includes inside of any directories recursively. Jump back to the main file and notice that the red squiggles are still there. Hover it again and just click in Visual Studio Suggestion to add a new include path automatically. And that's it! You should be able to navigate through the code without any problems. Now you can use Ctrl Click or F12 to go to the definitions easily. This is very handy. My second recommended extension is called Shortcut Menu Bar by Jerry Goyle. As the name says, this extension creates a menu bar with some interesting functionalities, like Beautify to reformat your code and the Terminal button to quickly open the terminal when you need it. Beautify will reformat your code nicely when you click on the brackets button. The Terminal shortcut, you can click on it and that's going to open the terminal straight for you. By the way, I prefer to keep on the right side, like this. And finally, my third recommended extension is called Action Buttons by Suan Lanlige. This extension allows you to create custom actions here at the bottom, which you can configure to run commands such as build or run the application. To set this up for the IDF, click on this little gear, extension settings, and edit this JSON file. I like to create two commands, the first one, build and the second one, run, with some extra parameters to also open the terminal and start monitoring. In order to build, just type this command, idf.py build. For the run button, I will put idf.py flash, which will build and load the application. I will also add dash p to set the COM port and dash b to set the baud rate. And finally monitor, to open the terminal when everything is done. Just remember to press Ctrl plus right square bracket to close the terminal after you finish. So that's it! Now we have Visual Studio Code configured, building and running use the IDF framework. I hope you liked this video. If you don't want to miss my ESP32 series, consider subscribing. And if you have any question, just comment below. See you in the next one.